So there are two ways to get to the Hobbiton movie set. One is to drive yourself and get there super early. The best time of day to go is in the morning because the sunlight's good. Unfortunately, it's booked out so far in advance and we didn't know that we were only able to get a morning tour if we went to the town of Mata Mata and you go to what's called the iSite, which is like the information tourist office. You grab the bus there and then they take you to the site. So we are not gonna be there right when it opens but we'll be there early enough and it's the best we can do <laughs> right now we've got some sun so we're keeping our fingers crossed that it stays and that it's beautiful <laughs> and here are our tickets look at how cute the little door is Uh, the Alexander's farm. Now the Alexander's are the ones who own the farm. They run the tourism business. To make sure this is all possible. Do all the farming as well. 1,250 acres of it. So if you guys look out you can see the great view in the rolling green hills. Now on this farm they can get up to 15,000 sheep. It's a lot of sheep. But sadly uh None of them made it into the movie. As Peter Jackson thought they were too white and too modern looking. So what he did was he went and got his own stunt double sheep. Now of course I will be a tour guide for today so when we get down to set I'll be showing you around, giving you all the ins on everything that happened on set. Get enthusiastic because you're going to Hobbiton guys. such as Gandalf with the smaller hobbit holes to make them seem so much larger than the tiny little hobbits that they were supposed to be as they were a little larger in person than they appeared on camera of course. And then I'd use the uh, people who play the characters of the hobbits with the larger hobbit holes to make them seem like they were the correct size for a hobbit hole, like they weren't too big or too small for them as uh, they were probably the normal height of you and I. So if you if any males here are under five foot four or any females here are under five foot two, can I get a show of hands? Anyone like that height? Because if so, then welcome home. You guys are the perfect height to play a hobbit. All right, for size. My mailbox. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Didn't do that. So the Shire film set was built in 1999 for the Lord of the Rings movies and then it was taken down after that because this is a private farm. Then once they decided to make the Hobbit films, it was rebuilt in the late 2000s and then they decided to keep it here for tourists. So here we are as tourists. So here we are as tourists. <laughs> so the movie filming here for the original films in 1999 took three months. But then the filming here for The Hobbit, they were only here for 12 days. Wait, All what? of this for 12 days. I didn't know that. Yes. Oh. Wow. That blows my mind. In the book, it talks about hobbits sitting underneath plum trees. When it came to the filming of the movie, they realized that the people who played the hobbits were a little too big in size compared to the famous plum trees over here. So what they did was they brought in peach and apple trees. They practically stripped the whole tree down, took all the peaches and the leaves and the apples, and they rewired artificial leaves and plums to it. Just to keep it accurate to the book for any crazy fans that may be watching the movie or come in here and think, that's not a plum tree. Yeah, just as you glide your eyes over the beautiful scenery here. If you guys want to look up on the hills and down below, I'd like to see if you guys could spot the one artificial tree. Completely fake, no real roots in the ground, only made out of material. Now if any of you guys are pointing to the tree right on top of the hill there, right above Bilbo Baggins' house with the green door which you guys will get to go up to later. Over 200,000 hand-wired leaves is going to that tree. And a little story about that, 10 days before filming, the crew looked at that tree and they thought, hmm, those leaves aren't exactly the right colour that we want them to be. So you can imagine the crew being like, oh my gosh, now to be hoisted up onto these big cranes and repaint each individual leaf and spray each individual leaf until it was the right colour again. So you can imagine the amount of detail that they really put into the set behind me here. This place 
as gorgeous as it is, it is extremely busy. Everything is a tour. You can do private tours, but regardless, it's a tour. The one thing that is really cool is some of the hobbit holes, while it is a long line, you get to go inside. <laughs> So right here behind us is Sam's house. Fun fact, his wife in the film, her two children in the film are actually her two children. Then right here is the field where Bilbo has his 111th birthday. That right there is a famous tree. Apparently it's one of the most famous trees in the world. It's over 100 years old. Just down at the Green Dragon there, you guys have four drink options. One's complimentary, after that, sadly, you have to pay, but I mean, they're quite big glasses, so you guys should be satisfied. Now, uh, for the four drink options, the three alcoholic ones, you have light beer, dark beer, and an apple cider. And then the non-alcoholic drink option is a ginger beer. Ignore the beer, I promise you, it is just a fizzy drink. Do the dark beer, please. Cheers, thank you. So every tour ends with a visit to the Green Dragon where they give you your choice of beer, cider, or ginger beer, and you just have a nice little drink and Enjoy the beautiful Hobbiton weather. What do you think? It was so weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cute, but like 
just strange, you know, that you can walk through this entire movie set. I, I just feel like you have to do it. Mm -hmm. You do. It's just like part of New Zealand now. You didn't go to New Zealand if you didn't see Hobbiton. Well, thanks for coming, honey. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Mm.